Good morning, Professor. Good morning, class. I should go mute it too, Professor. <laughs> morning. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I think you're muted, Professor. I'm being muted. Thank you. All right. So now we can hear you. There you go. You were not, you didn't hear me, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I'm muted. Okay, guys. Um, welcome everyone. I saw some of you on the on the orientation and some of you didn't make it, that's okay. The orientation was available on the homepage of Canvas. Some of you might have view it. So get your question ready. Today is our first day. Uh, so you see the screen, do you see the screen of, do you see the Canvas screen? Yes? Yes, yes. Good, good. Okay, so this is our Canvas screen. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to record the lectures every day, and these lectures will be posted in module uh, by the week. So now let's get started. Let's get started. Oh, it's being recorded automatically. Okay, so I, I must have set it up. Okay, people are getting in. Admit, admit. All right, so the lecture is being recorded already. Okay, so, uh, so we're gonna get started. So everybody, please, if you have your Canvas page, you know that you can find this page with the information, uh, which we call syllabus. This syllabus on the homepage is not uh, in the greatest detail possible, and you, but you can have the, the full version of it. You can download the full version of it, you know, by download, by clicking on these two buttons, Mass 180. So these are the two syllabus for the two courses, okay? We know that this is two courses, right? We, we understand this is two courses. One is the pre-calculus and the other one is called the support, the pre-calculus support class. Okay. Understood. Understand, so you guys registered in both classes and everything. All right, about myself. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce myself. Okay, my last name is Wang, uh, W-A-N-G, and my first name is Li Jian. You can call me Professor Wang or Miss Wang or my first name. You can go by my first name. My email address is here. My phone number, this is my personal number, but uh, when you need to, be in contact with me and uh, you can use that as a way to contact me, but text only. Uh, pronto, okay, did you guys see the palm pronto here? It's a green button. It's a green button that you can download an app from your cell phone. So right now I would like everybody to look at your cell phone. Okay, look at your cell phone and find the app store. You guys are good at this, right? 
download an app, but this app is called Pronto. And the, as I know that there, there, there might be two different buttons with, this, with similar names, and you're gonna choose the green one, the green button. Okay, so download the app and you are in the, then you'll be in the group, in the class group that's set up by Pronto. Okay, this is one of our main, uh, one of the, uh, con you know, communication channel. Okay, you guys downloading that app? Pronto. We can you we we will use this uh, pronto um, not only after class sometime maybe even during the class okay if you have you want to show any work and you want to um, show it to the class and I go over it in the class in that case you can submit your work okay you just take a picture and upload uh, to pronto and everybody will see or if it's only to me you can send that directly to me as well. Okay, so Pronto acts as like, you reach my cell phone directly. Okay, when you, when you send a Pronto message, I will, get, I will get that message, you know, from my cell phone directly. Is that clear, everybody? All right. The number of units of the course, of course, we know that's five units plus two units. The support class takes two units. And the code requisite, okay, you understand that. And our meetings, Monday through Wednesday um, from 8 to 9.35, and Thursday from 8 to 10.05. All the lectures will be recorded. But I encourage everybody to come to the live lecture because that's how we can interact with each other. Okay, so please also note the office hours, the office hours. I have office hours Monday through Thursday, Monday through Thursday, and at these hours, at these hours. Okay, you are very welcome to join. You're very welcome to join. Okay, if you have any other needs, which is outside the office hours, just feel free to reach out to me. Yes, Farouz. Professor, regarding office hours, am I allowed to be in your office hours also in case if you need me or if I can learn from your question and the question a student asking? Uh, you, it's optional for you to come. Of course, you're welcome to come, but I'm not going to make you come because I think I appreciate. that's outside your job description, right? Yeah, yes, it is. But uh, it is for my own benefit to learn more, to be able to help the students and encourage them to use the office hours because that is the, one of the most important thing to prepare for quiz exam and finally final. Sure, you're welcome to join anytime. And, uh, and by the way, Farouz is our TA and he's uh, assigned to-, um, to I'm, I'm here, yeah. sorry. So did you see, here, uh, see a Farouz right there? His name is on the screen. I, yes, and I can write it again just uh, in case. So he has a board right there. Happy, right. happy face, definitely. <laughs> so in class tutor, you see CT, classroom tutor officially, but in class tutor, uh, teacher assistant, not officially, but uh, I basically, you know, real time help uh, beside I'm um, professor assistant. Whatever she asked me to do in order for you to pass this class with B or better, if not A, why not A? I'm here to her. Professor, okay, very thank good. You. Thank you, ma'am. Very good. Thank you, Farouz. All right, so that's the that is, that's the office hour and um, the catalog description of this course. This one, this description is the shortest one I've ever seen. Okay. I don't know if you guys read about course description, 
but even though the sentence is very, very short, but it, it, it covers the material of five courses. All right, so let me go over that with you. This course includes a study of algebraic. Algebraic, okay? When we talk about algebraic, it covers pre-algebra, elementary algebra, and intermediate algebra, college algebra even, even college algebra. Okay, for some of you who have taken it. And uh, so think about that. Okay, think about that. So that's the four courses already. Okay, and that algebraic exponential logarithm. Okay, so these four courses, four courses. And next, okay. Trigonometry, trigonometry. Trigonometry is one course by itself. Trigonometry is one course by itself, okay? And an introduction to analytical geometry and applications. So analytical geometry um, is also, it could be like a, a course in itself with one or two units, with one or two units. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna work on these different elements. And now all five courses, I typically will say these, let's make it five courses. So this class is one course with a very short description. It's just, it's five courses in one, five courses in one, okay? You might have taken, uh, you know, elementary algebra five years ago, okay? Uh, trigonometry two years ago. Intermediate algebra maybe, you know, four years ago, right? How much do you remember? How much do you remember? I, okay, I don't have a test for you. But if you, you have, you guys have looked at, you have seen the notes, right? I'm, we're gonna go over the notes um, just in a little bit, right? So this class is five courses in one. On the first day, I cannot say enough how important that the success in this class as it is to support your success in your next class. We all understand that your, your fabulous grade in the next class, which is a calculus class, will carry you to that fabulous school you're going to. Do you agree with me? Well, that's my understanding. Is that right? For sure. For sure, right? You, if, you get, if you get an A from this class, great. The real test, however, is whether you're gonna get that amazing grade in calculus class. So this class is preparing you Okay, this class gathers all you need in the past, whether you remember or you don't remember, you review, we don't need a review. We probably touch everything you need to know for your success in calculus class. Okay, we try to touch everything because there are a lot of, lot of materials. The reason I'm saying this because I, I want to tell you that you need to work hard. We need to work hard, okay? I will work hard with you, okay? I'm here to help. And you have to be able to, um, you know, I'm gonna hold your hands and the, at the end of the semester, you're gonna walk independently to get into the next class and be successful, right? So right now you might be thinking, oh, I need to get over this one in order to get into calculus classes. But the truth in fact is that, okay, the truth is that if you don't make this class really successful, you're not, you, you may be able to get in calculus class, but it may take you a couple of semesters to get out of that other class, Math 190. Do you guys understand how serious this is? But if you put in the work, work really hard, work really hard, understand the lectures, re-watching the lectures over and over, 
and come to office hours, do all the quizzes and exams, and make sure you get everything. And that will ensure your success in the next class, okay? So the key is that we do this together and you put in the work and I will be working hard for you. I'll be working hard for you. Okay, so next, instruction format. Okay, so all the, the instruction format will be, uh, you know, will be shown to you today. The course website is hosted through Canvas, you know, all of that. All the course materials, okay? So let me show you something. You should be seeing this. I should show you the student view, okay? You're gonna see this five buttons. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Your every day you have lectures, you go to Tech Connect, uh, Tech Connect Zoom. You already know that, you've done that. Modules, modules, okay? On the modules, you see the course syllabuses, uh, syllabi and the notes. We're gonna talk about the notes specifically, okay? This is the major trunk of your course material, okay? This is the major trunk of your course material. If you want to know, oh, how much do I remember my algebra classes? You, you, you look at the notes, how much of those exercises can you do right how many how many of those exercises you can do with ease and you know what to do what it means and everything that will be a test that will be a self check self check okay if you do great if you can do the entire notes all of these exercises i would say uh, I'm not even asking you to do all of those exercises. I would say 80%. If you can do 80% of the notes with comfort, with ease, you know, I, I'm not saying that there's no struggle. You, you, may, you might struggle somewhere, somehow. 80% of it, you are, pro you are probably pro are ready to go to the next class. Then you don't need to be in this class. Do you follow me? You don't need to spend your time here. So today is the first day you still have time to transfer to other classes, okay? But if you cannot do 80% of it, then you need to work hard in this class, okay? You need to work hard in this class. So once again, I'm saying this over and over again, I'm with you, okay? Even though we're remote teaching, remote learning, and I'm, I'm available just, just a text message away. Just a text message away. How long does it take you to text me? Yes? It's pretty easy, right? You text, you text your friends all the time. Just, say, just treat me as your friend. When you need help, hey, could you help me with that? Okay. I saw someone send a message from Pronto. Thank you, Jeremy. And thank you, Pedro. Wonderful, okay? So once you get pronto, feel free to send a message. Just send me a message, okay? To your class, just yell out to the class, okay? Pronto, I already have prepared the materials for you. I have prepared a material for you. So all of these materials, okay? I have written them up. And I have used them for the past semesters. And so this is the, the result of accumulated work uh, from my part. And I hope that will be beneficial for you. Will be, I hope that will be beneficial to you. Um, everything quadratic, that's another big, in big topics. And, and now you look at week one, week two, these are the materials recorded from last semester. But I put them here because I want to encourage you guys to study ahead. I, will, I may not be following exactly the same material. OK, I see more messages. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Jeremy. Wonderful. OK, yeah, I have my cell phone right next to me. So you may not, I may not, I'm not going to follow typically exactly the same procedure. 
But for those of you uh, who want to study ahead, you can do that. And every day the recording will be, say for example, in week one, our recording will be placed on week one as well. Your first quiz is already coming up. It's coming up, okay? How many quizzes or exams do you expect? You should expect one or two, minimum of two, except on the week of exams. So in the midterm, that week you only have just midterm. Okay, I see more messages. I'm very, very happy to see those messages. Okay, even just say hello. Okay, even just say hello. Very good. So now you, you are, you are, we have this communication channel from your cell phones to my cell phone. And I can also see that you can also uh, use Pronto uh, from, from Canvas, um, from Canvas. Let's see if you have that option. Actually, you don't have that option. Do you have that option on your side of Canvas? Can you see Pronto? No, I, can see from. I don't think so. You don't, okay, that's fine. So that's from your cell phone to my cell phone, okay? All of these materials, even though we recorded before with my other classes, I think it would be beneficial for you to study if you have time to study ahead. If you have, it's time to study ahead or just a review, what to see what, you know, this professor has done last, last semester. And this, these are the places you can visit, okay? So, and these pages, these pages will be updated almost daily, okay? A daily, mean, I mean, during the week, Monday through Thursday, Monday through Thursday. So today's lecture will be posted here as a new, okay? New lecture. And uh, so let's go back to, uh, to home. Let's go back to home, okay? So course material, textbook. Okay, got your messages, so wonderful. Just keep sending them. And, uh, but you don't need to just send at least once. Okay, so I know where, you know, where you where you in communication. Textbook. I mentioned this on the orientation. So I'm gonna say this again. Textbook, you can choose any you can choose any pre-calculus textbook. Even your grandpa has a pre-calculus textbook in the garage, you can get that. The material will be the same, okay? It just, just, just his book probably looks, looks old. If you have an older version of pre-calculus textbook from your high school, you can use that. You don't need to buy the new, you don't need to buy this textbook. Okay, you don't need to buy exactly the same textbook with the same, same author. It can be by a different author. Okay. So in that case, you know, I see, a lot, I see lots of messages on my cell phones. Forgive me, I'm not gonna reply those. You, you understand that we, you know, we're in the lecture, but I just wanna see that communication is, is working. My communication is working. Okay, so, but I do want you to have a textbook. Okay, it will be better yet. I don't know what kind of reader you are. I'm still the old styled reader. I, I still have, like to have the, you know, a hard copy, especially with math. And I think having a hard copy, sit down with paper pencil and sit down to study is still the best way yet. It's still the best way yet, okay? Mm -hmm. I typically don't do well with, uh, with looking at an electronic book. It tires my eyes. But if you're different, you can have an electronic. But having a textbook, the true purpose of having a textbook is you read it. Okay, I don't think it's necessary for you to buy a textbook just to get the homework. Okay, you don't need to do that because my notes will have all your homework and it's given to you for free. You don't need to, to buy a book just to get the text, just to get the homework. Okay, we take that part out. 
but I still want you to have a textbook so you will read it. This part of learning to read a mathematical text is absolutely important for your success in your future math classes or even beyond. Because reading mathematics textbook is a very different experience. It's very different from reading a novel. It's very different from reading Harry Potter's. Okay, it's very different from reading, a, a, you know, novels. I don't know what kind of novels you read. It's very different. You have to really engage in the process. So when you read the textbook, okay, I will explain throughout the semester how to read the mathematical sentences, especially those key sentences. In fact, I built in that in the core in this course from beginning to end. Because you actually read word for word, you actually chew on it. Okay. Sometimes it's yummy, sometimes it tastes spicy, and sometimes you just powerful words. There are a lot of powerful words out there, and I'm going to point it out to you. And these Understanding of these words will build your foundation, will build your foundation for your next course, <clears throat> for your next course. All right, grades determination, grades determination. Students' final course grades are determined using the following deliverables. Quizzes, which you're gonna have at least one per week. Midterm exam, you have one midterm exam, which is in the week, of, uh, week number eight. And final exam in the week number 16, okay? Formula, formula, grade formula. I have two grade formula for you. And your current grade book is using one of the formula, the one on the top, formula one. But after all the, all the grades are, you know, are done, all the quizzes are done, I will be calculating your grades using both formula and the higher score goes to your course grade. Okay. And the grading scales, of course, is uh, just, you know, uh, did I, yeah, I should have said that somewhere. Of course, A is 90% or higher. Okay. Well, I, I'm, how come I, I didn't have that? Okay. 90% or higher is A, from 80% to 89%, that's a B. 70% to 79%, that's a C. 60% to 69%, that's a D. Below 60%, that's a F, okay? Uh, quizzes weekly, we have addressed that. There are at least one quiz, midterm, week eight, final exam, week 16. You're gonna have two kinds of uh, exam forms, okay, or quiz forms. The first form will be, you know, typical multiple choices. And the other form is that you have to write it down. You write it down, you upload it as a, you know, PDF, doc, X file, you upload it to Canvas and I will grade it and, and, and you'll get the grades. So these are the two typical forms you're gonna be examined. Okay, you're gonna be assessed. So on the one hand, as a teacher, I, um, you know, I help you, but I also have the responsibility to assess you, to see if you understand the material and, um, you know, which part of material should be emphasized more to, improve, to enhance better understanding. So these will be, um, uh, you know, this throughout the semester. So I'm, I'm teaching and assessing you every week, every week. Um, important information regarding the exam. When this is the part I want you guys to, this is like a personal responsibility when you are taking exams. You want to make sure, okay? Uh, you want to make sure during your exam, you're not gonna be interrupted by uh, the internet problems, okay? Every exam, every quiz I give it to you, you typically have three attempts. You can try three times. 
and the highest score will go to your uh, that quiz uh, score or exam score. And uh, then you say, oh, I, I have computer crashed or internet crashed for me. And for all three times, I, I'm sorry, if that happens, and I'm afraid I cannot give you more times. I cannot give you more times, okay? Because if the time it crashes the first time, then you would learn the lesson and say, okay, I'm gonna find a place that this is not gonna happen. Okay, so this is the personal responsibilities, okay? Academic integrity, okay? So I copied and pasted these paragraph from, uh, you know, from the, the department, you know, the, from the Dean actually, okay? It says Alchemy College stands on academic integrity, forbids acts of academic dishonesty, include cheating, plagiarism, falsification of academic documents or fabrication statement for academic gain, to name a few. Examples of academic dishonesty include, but not limited to, giving or receiving help on any assignment in the course, including homework assignment, copying or sharing answers from other students, as well as copying from any types of solution manuals, online sources, or published documents, evasive editing, or making any verbal or written statement that is falsified for academic gain. Any student that's caught performing any act of academic dishonesty of any form will be reported to the college for sanctioning. A student is encouraged to contact their professor if he or she question an act that could be perceived as a form of academic dishonesty. At our staff development, and uh, there's certainly a lot of talks and uh, you know on this topic. But from my perspective, from my perspective, as I said earlier, you take this class, the success of this class is closely related, related to your success in the next class. And you don't want to commit, uh, commit those acts of dishonesty. And I trust you guys from the start on to, unless it's proved otherwise. And I know you're taking this class seriously. You're not gonna do that. Okay, so that's always my, uh, my stance uh, in terms of trusting my student. Okay, because you know the consequence. The consequence is not only you be reported, you know, for all of that, you're not gonna make it to the next class. So that that's a waste of time, isn't it? Right, that may cause you to take the next course, Math 190, two or three times. Do you think that's worth it? It's not worth it, okay? And most likely we will return to campus teaching uh, in the spring semester, possibly. Okay, I, I'm not saying that for sure because that's to not totally up to us. And secondly, I wish to, tell, to let you know that the school uh, as an institution is making the effort that in the future, okay, I, I, in the near future, okay, it, they will be, it might be required for students to go to certain testing site to take the exam, take a proctored exam on site. So in that case, you know, it, there's no way you can, you, you, you know, if you, if, you, if, if you copy someone's work or you get, you, you get help during the exam, it says that would not be possible. So you still just try to do, uh, to do the work by yourself. Now, I know you, some of you guys work and you have tremendous pressure from, maybe from your parents, maybe from your work, maybe from your life, all kinds of situation happens that you may not have time to study, right? In those cases, in those cases, reach out to me to see if I can help in your, in your particular situation, but always try to do the work independently and do the best you can, even if, okay? Do I have students that have to drop out the class? Uh, yes, that happens. 
even if you couldn't make it this course to the end for whatever reason, okay, still do the best you can. You can take the course next time, take the course next time, okay? So, so make sure you, the work you do is yours. The work you do is yours, okay? All right, so that's about this topics that the school, um, you know, El Camino College and administrations, they want us to illustrate that elaborately. So that's what I did, okay? There's nothing personal, okay? And I know you guys are totally honest, okay? All right, course objectives, course objectives. What you see here, okay, look at this uh, short description, right? This description is expanded into what? Into how many items? These are the things you need to be able to do. Okay, these are the things you need to be able to do. Someone need to be admitted. Okay, okay, so all of these things you must be able to do, okay? Manipulate and simplify complex numbers and algebraic expressions at the pre-calculus level. Factor, right? And find zeros, polynomials using division and factor theorem. We're gonna cover that, review that. Solve algebraic uh, exponential logarithm. Uh, trigonometry equation with absolute value. Solve quadratic rational inequality. Does these words sound familiar to you guys? Do they, do they sound familiar to you guys? Have you heard of them? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they good. do. Very good. You heard of them. But do you, do you still remember what they are? If you Pretty do, much. great. If you don't, that's why you're here for. That's what you're here for, right? You don't remember everything. When was the last time you took a math class? For some of last, you, it might, last might be last, hmm? last year. Last year, good. And some of you might be taking that class, you know, a couple, a couple of years ago, right? How much do you remember from that math class now, right? So now you need to have everything together to prepare for your next class, which is a calculus, which is a calculus, okay? But just remember, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. That's why I still insist to do the live lectures. Okay, student learning objectives. You always see these things and we are required to have this in the syllabus every semester. Basically, it says everything we teach you, everything you learned, you, express, you, are, you are expected to, to be assessed and demonstrate that you have learned it, okay? Well, there's a disclaimer here. I learned this from my colleagues. Okay, the professor reserved the right to adjust any details of the course syllabi or revise the course timeline based on the pace of the course, but is responsible to redistribute the syllabus immediately. If there's any changes I will make, I will let you know as soon as possible. All right, there's a personal arrangement here. I, I put it up here on the top of the syllabus. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I do want to make a point here. Uh, we are scheduled to meet Monday through Thursday every day online, but this coming Thursday, this coming Thursday, there will only be a recorded lectures. There will only be a recorded lectures because on that day, I have a medical reason that I'll be, uh, I'll be in surgery uh, in the morning. There's no other way to, to, re to schedule that uh, uh, procedure. So this Thursday, you will not have live lectures. You will have a recorded lectures. My plan is to do the recording Wednesday night. I will send the link to you. If you can join that lecture, it'd be great. If you cannot, you're gonna watch the lecture the next day. And the lecture will be available um, 
in the uh, in um, in the module. Okay, then is I will recover over the uh, Labor Day weekend, so I will be seeing you the following Tuesday. Is that clear, everybody? So if you wonder how come there's no lecture on the tech Zoom, you know, schedule, that's because of that personal reason. Okay. And I don't foresee I will have any other personal reason for such a uh, you know, different arrangement, but just to let you know, okay? And the grades. If you click the grades, now you see nothing. You don't see anything. But in, in the course of the semester, you will see that your, um, your grade will be, will be promptly posted. If you take a you know a multiple choice quiz grade a uh, quiz, and after you're done, the quiz grade will be reflected on the on the grade book. Okay, next one, discussion. I set up this discussion board. Okay, I set up this discussion board. You can start posting as soon as you know after today's class, if not sooner. Actually, I made them avail. I made the uh, I, I can see some people are, pro are probably posting. Oh, we don't have six. Perfect. I'll, I'll start reading them. The, the first week, the first day, I wish you guys to share with me about your personal experience. Okay, I would appreciate it. I want to know you guys uh, a little bit more. Okay, I know, uh, I know all of you guys are struggling in this pandemic situation. We're not able to go to the class, okay? So I welcome you guys to post any information about yourself. And I'm gonna tell you a bit about myself. You, would you like to hear about it? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I, um, I started teaching for community colleges since 1994. You guys, most of you were not even born then, right? Um, or some of you were not even born then. Uh, so ever since then, I've been teaching at different campuses and my academic uh, you know, credential is I, I got my master degree from USC and afterwards I started teaching uh, at the community colleges. I, and I really like teaching in, in community colleges. And so that's how I have, uh, I was hired as a full-time faculty in 1998 until now. So I mean, teaching, you can count the number of years. It's almost 30 years, right? It's almost 30 years. But I do wanna give you guys some other insight regarding um, you know, the learning mathematics. Okay, some of you might look at me saying, wow, she has all these years she's doing math. She must be really smart. Do you think I'm really smart? Do you think I might be very smart or smarter than a lot of people? That's how you feel about mathematical math, math professors, don't you? Anybody like to give me some feedback? Let me look at that. Do you think your math professors are really smart? Usually. Usually, <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> it's a usually. Thank you for comments. But I, want, I wish to tell you, all my life, for many, many years, especially in my younger years, I always try to look smart. But I knew deep down, I know I'm not. You may say, oh, that's your Asian modesty and so on and so forth. It's actually a very personal struggle at my age. At my age, I have gotten over it because I knew I will never win that battle. Okay. As a matter of fact, when I was a student, if I recall my student years, in college, I think I was probably, I would, I probably could be described as somewhat depressive and work really hard. And I never felt I was smart. Okay, even my 
even my father commented me as not very smart, probably kind of borderline stupid, but worked pretty hard. They say, oh, your father comments you on that. It was pretty harsh. Yes, it was pretty harsh, but he didn't know the psychologies of modern time. So, and you can see that his comment really affected me somewhat. So for many, many years in my life, I tried to prove to him that I'm smart and I still wasn't able to make it. Now he's gone. And I have accepted the however smart, however much smart I have. And I just, that's the way I am. That's the way I am, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a story so you can, you can judge how smart I am. Are you ready? This is a real story. This is a real story. You ready for it? You know, I'm a, I'm a fresh off the boat. Okay, so in my early days when I came to the United States and I didn't know how to drive. At that time, I was about 27 years old. I was 27 years old. And I need to, I didn't need to learn how to drive, right? I must. And by the time I learned how to drive, it was, I was 28. And then uh, my at the time I went to school in Virginia. Have you guys heard of the famous school called Virginia Tech? It yeah. became famous because of that shooting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was my first graduate school and in the United States. So I was there and my boyfriend, my husband at the time was boyfriend. He was, he was telling me, you know what? You got to drive and you get your license in, in Virginia, in, you know, in that little town called Blacksburg. And it's much easier to pass a driving test in a small town like that. So I took the driver, I took the written test and I, I was, I scheduled a driving test, um, you know, scheduled an appointment. So there I was. I still remember that driving test, right? Uh, it was, there's a, I was, I was on yield. I should be on yield. Instead of waiting for the traffic, I got in the traffic. You know the consequence, I did not make it. I didn't pass that driving test. Ah, no big deal, I'm gonna come to LA, I'm gonna transfer to USC. Uh, that's all great, no problem. So I started learning how to, I continue to learn how to drive in Los Angeles. Then I took the written test and I failed. I failed my first written test. And then I was able to pass my second written test. How smart can a person be if I have to take my written test twice? I'm glad that my children are doing much better. They passed their first written test. Okay, so uh, all in all, I passed my written test on the third time, if you think about it, right? But anyway, without further ado, driving test. I took my driving test the first time, I didn't pass it. I took my driving test the second time, I didn't pass it. I was nearly collapsed. I was so depressed. It was a big deal for me at the time, right? Can you imagine that you're taking a course, you, you just... Oh my God, there's so much work. And I just, driving test to me at the time, it was, it's a number one priority. And I didn't pass it. On the third time, I finally passed it. So I took a total of four driving tests and finally passed it. How many times did it take you to pass a driving test? One time. <laughs> See, you're already better than I. Twice. Right? I'm taking it. Yeah. Good job. Perfect. First time. So now you can judge how smart I am. 
It took four times for me to try pass the driving test. But math is not about how smart you are. Not only about you, how smart you are. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the work, right? I never had an IQ test, but I'm scared to take one. I'm afraid to take one because I feel my IQ test is not going to be very high. All my life, I never felt smart, okay? But I always work hard. I work extremely hard. So I was actually famous for in my classmates for being working hard. I always kind of want to pretend, you know, I, I got the grade, but I didn't work hard, but I never make it that way. I don't know if that resonates in you. Maybe it's because just because of the culture I grew up in, right? Now I can proudly tell you, I'm over all of that, okay? I'm 57 years old, I'm probably your mother's age. I don't even care who, who says what about my being smart or not being smart. I'm the way just I am. I am me, okay? I want to learn something, I'm going to work hard and I will make it. Guys, are you guys with me? You don't need to be super smart. I'm going to show you all the struggles I have struggled in my math, you know, learning math, getting degrees, getting master degrees, and so on and so forth. I can make it, and I made it. Okay. So there's another myth I want to also share with you about my, you know, some people will say, Oh, you see this professor, you know, she's been teaching math for about 30 years and she's doing this stuff every day. And of course she's good at doing this. It's true, that's true. Right? So this might give some people the impression that, oh, to be as good as I am, or maybe at a certain level of, you know, the way I do math, because I, I remember this time one student commented on the work I was writing on the board. Guess what that student said to me? I never forget. I was writing down to show him the work and he said, you look like a wizard. Do you feel that way sometimes when your professor writing things on the board? Does he or she look like a wizard to you? You can write your comment on chat, I'm looking at it. Or you can text from Pronto. No? Good. Anybody think yes? Do your math professional look like a wizard? No, they just look like they know what they're doing. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, that's all good. Do you think we have moments that we don't know what we are doing? We do, we do too, okay? I'm glad to hear that comments. It's good that we need, we should know what we are doing, yeah? Because we're, we're the professional, we're supposed to showing you the way, but do not be fooled by it. And you should not think that, oh, this professor must be really smart, look what she can do. You can do that too. And I also want to tell you, it doesn't take you 30 years to do that. Okay, it doesn't need 30 years for you to do that. Okay, because I don't want you to think that you have to study for that long in order to be as good. You can do that in a couple of years. If you put in the effort. You can do that too. And I'm here to show you the way. Is that a deal? Yes? Yeah. You can do that too. You just have to know how. You just have to know how. Okay? Because there's certain ways of mathematics there's certain ways to do mathematics. So today, 
Um, even though this is the first day, I have spent almost an hour explaining to you and introduce myself to you. And, uh, and I would like to hear something from you on the discussion board, on the discussion board. And feel free to share with me and with your classmates. And I promise you, I'm going to read them. OK? If you have any special need for help, and please don't hesitate to let me know. OK? So today, we're actually going to start, our, start a little bit about the lecture. Even though we have, we still have like uh, you know more than thirty minutes left, okay. So I want to take some questions from you, and uh, and I, you know if you don't have any questions, we'll go ahead. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. If you have any questions, so I have introduced myself. Anything else you want to know about me? Oh, by the way, I have, I have two children. They, they are grown adults. I think they're about your age. So each one of you look to me, you're my kids. Okay. When, when I teach these classes, when I look at all these young faces, <clears throat> you always remind me of my own children. And I will be thinking, you know, I will be thinking a way of thinking about you in the way a mother will be thinking of you. I would say, okay, I need my kids to learn this and this and that. I want him to learn really well. Did you always know you wanted to be a teacher? That's a good question, Nicole. You know, I always wanted to be a teacher. When I was a little girl as a student in, uh, as a pupil, there's this one teacher seemed to, um, seemed to give me very good impressions. You know, I, I'm, I'm usually a teacher's pet. You know what, <laughs> you know what that means? I always listen to the teacher. Teacher tell us to do what, I would do that. That's a good, that answer, Nicole. And the other, the other reason I became a teacher and I wanted to be teacher because I saw this movie, which really touched me. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the story, okay? And this is probably more than 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago. I mean, I'm your parents age, remember? I'm your parents age, maybe even older. I saw this movie this movie is about something happened in the Soviet. I don't remember the name of the movie. I think it's about a country teacher, a teacher in the countryside. So there's this woman, um, there's this woman, she was, uh, she was, of course, she was a young woman. She was, she was, uh, uh, it was in the, I think it was during the time of uh, Second World War. And this woman, she uh, is before, it's around the time that the Hitler was invading a Soviet. It was around that time. So this woman, she, um, she got married in that time and her husband was sent to the war, sent to the front and uh, these are, how, these are how much I remember because her husband died in the war and she never get remarried again. And she, so she dedicated the rest of her life to teaching in a school in a small village. So that story um, kind of in a way inspired me to be a teacher, to be like her. You guys are with me? So I will always want to be a teacher. So I got, I got my dream. I got my dream. 
So after all these years of teaching, of course, I never knew I would be teaching mathematics, by the way. I never knew I would be teaching mathematics. But I also want to tell you, math is not my favorite subject. How many, of you, how many of you are with me? Maybe, yeah, is it called The First Teacher? Maybe, I think that movie, I just don't remember the name. But then that, that movie gave me deep, deep impression. Um, maybe, yeah, look it up. And I, I later tried to find that movie. I didn't find that movie. Okay. Uh, math is not even my favorite subject. But I, I'm not saying I'm hate, I hate math. I didn't hate math. But um, it turned out, you know, doing math is the only opportunity I have. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, I, want, I wish to tell you, in my family, I'm the first generation of, uh, I'm the first gen that went to college. So my parents couldn't help me. My, my parents couldn't help me. My mother was, has had a little, very little education. My, my father had a little bit of education, but uh, not much. So when I was able to go to college, you know, in China, we, we have to, we, we take that national exam, national entrance exam. I didn't do spectacularly well, but I did, it, I did it good enough. I was able to go to a college. So my college was not one of those elite colleges, okay? And that, that is another level of, uh, of you know, the sense that I have to work hard because there are all these other smart people. They got to go to the elite schools, right? Again, to those Ivy League, and I never even heard about Ivy League schools in that in those years, right? And uh, do you guys, anybody knows a little bit of history about the Chinese Cultural Revolution? A little bit, right? In your history class, some of you might learn that. I grew up in the Cultural Revolution, so we learned nothing. All the schools are closed. Okay, all the schools are closed. And what do the people, people do? The, the, the school I went to, okay, the elementary school I went to, uh, in the summer, every window, you know, every glass is broken. Uh, where in China are you, um, am I from? I'm from Manchuria. Manchuria, outside the Great Wall. Thank you for asking. You guys are very curious, okay? Yeah, I, I, I would like to tell you, tell you guys, you know, but that's gonna make it too long. But anyway, so I, um, we, I think at that time of China, we're still like in the, it was a very backward place, very backward place. I made it to the exam, I, I did well in math, not as spectacularly well. I, I barely passed the exam. I barely passed the exam. There are people getting A's and B's. I got a D, something like that, uh, on that exam. And I got into a college. Okay, actually, yeah, I got a D because according to the, the grade, uh, the grade scale, I was just, just telling you. So I got into the university. And I, and in my classmates, just, just tell you, just tell you how what, what kind of learning environment I was in. Um, some of my my classmates, their parents are the professors in the university I was going to. Can you picture yourself in that situation? Your classmates' parents, so they are the second generation, right? Even more, maybe the third generation, right? My parents know nothing. They don't know calculus, never heard of it, right? But my classmates, they have parents, they are professors, they're math professors. I was studying in a math department like that. 
guess what? I have to work very hard, right? My hard work actually eventually put me at the top of the class. I'm proud to say. So it can be done. It can be done. So how hard did I work? You don't know how hard I work. Uh, I didn't see a movie for four years. I think I'm cheating a little bit. I saw only one movie in four years in college. And um, I studied very, very hard. Okay. Anyway, is that enough about me? Do you have any other questions? I'm a first generation of college student. It was hard. I know it was hard. You got no help. You got no help. How did I like USC? Hmm. I was there, I, I think I like USC, but attending school to me seemed to be always related to a lot of study, a lot of um, pressure because you always have to do homework, right? Otherwise you're gonna do well. And, uh, as a student, I always, I always know I have to work hard. So when I was at USC, I didn't really attend much of uh, social activities or uh, vacation stuff. And I, I was really just a, one of those students. And, you know, just, you know, go to class, do homework, go to office hours. And I, I'm the kind of student that doesn't speak much in class because I always feel embarrassed. If I ask a question, that question must be a stupid question. I don't want to show everybody how stupid I am, right? So I don't ask questions. Yeah, does that make sense? I never feel smart, I never feel smart. Um, Anything else? So after all these, you know, I'm not a smart professor. I'm just a, a mess teacher. I let I learn enough, I think that I can, uh, can help you. If you still want to be in my class, great. If you think I'm not smart enough for you, I don't feel offended, okay? There are a lot of other smart people you can find in our department. Have you made up your mind? Yeah? So shall we get started? Do you wanna take a little bit break? No? Any other question? Okay, we're gonna get started. I'm so Jacob, you. Jacob sorry. had the question. Raise hands, Jacob. Oh, sorry, did I miss? Oh, come on, Jacob. What What's your question? Um, I know this makes sound weird, but for the quiz, it's like an anytime thing, right? Or is it only specifically during class? Yeah, it's anytime thing. You You'll be given, you know. Uh, you're gonna see it from the first quiz, right? From this open. I think it's open now. Uh, but you're gonna have until the end of the weekend to finish for this for this particular quiz. I, I usually give you the weekend. Okay. Okay, you can try three times, but each time you start, you only have 15 minutes or whatever time is specified. And in between you can study, okay? My quizzes are typically on the lecture. Okay, my quizzes are typically on the lecture. 
Any other questions? Let's see, I, I don't wanna miss anybody. Feel free to ask your questions. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you my Blackboard. You see my Blackboard? Yes. Okay, this is my Blackboard. Okay, this is a software that I can type. So I will insist on anything important I say, I will type. Okay, I'll be probably showing different screens. And today we're gonna talk about this language. Of mathematics. This language of mathematics. 